we, we probably spend equal, if not more, time uh, doing sound effects and sound design in our videos than we do on visuals and visual effects. So I would say sound effects are probably one of the most important things that you can do to up the production value of your video, and also, also the cheapest way to up the production value of your videos. Keep in mind, with any video that you create, that the experience of your show is like 90% sound driven. I mean, like, take a look at this shot here. No sound effects. Boring. Now, watch this one. Let's start by talking about what are sound effects. Sound effects refer to the things that you hear that establish the world of your video. These can be either made using various sound libraries or intentionally recorded and later edited in to make it feel real. The most exciting thing about sound effects and sound design is that there are virtually unlimited possibilities in terms of what you can do. An example of a library sound effect could be using rain in your background stem, ah, hear that, to create a mood. Another example could be adding the sound of a dog or you know, food oozing out of a can, which is actually the sound effect that they used for the T-1000 in Terminator 2 when it passes through the steel bars to sound dog food coming out of a can, which is weird and gross. So one of the videos that we've done that has a boatload of sound design uh, is one called Beach Justice. And this is just shot uh, on the roof of a building. And normally that's a pretty cheap video, but we spent a good two, three days just on the sound design. And I think, I really think it actually adds quite a bit to the video. <laughs> What we shot, super cheap, super fast. But what really makes that video stand out and what makes that video, I think, have that sort of professional sheen to it is the amount of time and work put into the sound design. Sound design starts with your script and not with the completion of your video. You should be asking yourself where should you put sound effects and why on the script stage, not when it's too late. Look at your script and think about how sound effects can help you convey your story. How can sound effects increase your production value? Or how can sound effects simply fill in the gaps in areas where you can't or won't spend money? Instead of shooting a big explosion, maybe this could be a chance for you to use a sound cue off in the distance. So, if you know that you won't actually need to create an explosion, or if you can't legally create an explosion, you won't need to actually spend any time worrying about it because you'll let sound do all the work for you. So sound design and talking about sound design is something that happens in every step of the process. It's no different than talking about the look of what you're doing or you know, the visual effects or what, any part of the movie because this is something that you should be thinking about every step of the process. So from the script writing stage, you're thinking about what will this scene sound like and maybe there's a mood we're trying to go for uh, sound-wise with that scene. When we're shooting it, you know, a lot of times you'll have ideas or even if you're on location, you'll hear some cool sound somewhere like, oh, we got to include this somehow. So like in the last season of Video Game High School, there's a lot of stuff where there's a the sound of a train in the distance and we realized that that like, is a cool sound and actually really worked to sort of fill out and sort of liven up the outdoor space. So it wasn't just the sound of, say, like traffic blowing by in the background. You actually had a sense of an environment and, and the world that you were sort of sitting and watching. Once you've created your blueprint slash plan for sound design, it's time to begin collecting sound effects. There are a lot of ways to get sound effects. A lot of these are using uh, online pay libraries or a pay per sound basis or purchasing an entire library for a set amount. Uh, additionally, there are a bunch of sites out there that offer free to use or royalty free sound clips, which are a great way to start building your own library. The key to searching for sounds, though, is to think outside the box. So, for example, if you're doing a search for gravel steps and you don't think that the sound that you have really works, try expanding your search to include words like crunch or rock steps, you know, things like that. If you're really not finding the sound that you like, well, that's on you. It's time to start recording your own sound effects. So the most fun you can have with sound design is actually going out into the field and recording your own sound effects and then manipulating those sounds digitally to make them fit into your scene. So now that you've made or found some cool sound effects, what do you do with them? Organizing your sound effects well will really help you create a strong soundscape in your video, but there's a lot of things going on when you edit this stuff, so you have to know what's what. A video's sound design is comprised of several layers or stems. This is an organizational tool used for separating sound elements that can easily be manipulated in the mixing session. Dialogue, or DIA, the stem can be comprised of both ADR, which is any dialogue you record off screen, and any spoken words by actors. The stem will also include any voiceover by actors as well. Effects, or FX stems, and depending on the type of film that you're doing, the effects tracks will probably be the most effects that you have. 
Foley, or F-O-L, which is a track composed of recorded in post-production sounds of footsteps, clothes rustling, and any other sound, sort of on-screen movement that's really hard to capture when you're shooting, and it really adds a lot of dimension and life to whatever the action is on screen. Music, or MX, is your music or score track, and backgrounds, or BGs, are generally one continuous sound that runs throughout the duration of an entire scene. A background can be the sound of a rainstorm outside, or um, cars blowing by, traffic, the BG, if used effectively, can really texturize the world of your show. Sound effects done right can sell your world and story in a way that visuals alone just can't do. Sound design is actually very important for what we do because what we have is sort of action-driven and visual effects-driven stuff. So visual effects, sound design is the most important part of a visual effect because without it, it's just something on the screen. There's no reality to it. So almost every visual effect that we see is sold by that sound effect. Everything from the CG troll monster in a VGHS season three to the gunshots and the punches and the fight sounds that we do in the video like, uh, whose plane is it anyway? <laughs> Once you've cut your show, it's time to watch everything several times and jot down notes of what you need and at what time code. Then you can start throwing in sound effects. You'll need to find the perfect sound right away, and I found the best method is to just throw down several similar sound effects, play them one by one, and then see which one is the most effective. This is, uh, this is a process referred to as auditioning those sounds. Once you've laid your sound effects in, listen to your track several times to see if the sound is both effective and believable. I found a lot of times just having the right sound effect in there is way less work than trying to get a sound effect that doesn't quite work and like trying to tweak it uh, digitally to make it sound right. Now you can start thinking about layering multiple sound effects to get a rich and real feel for your sound design. A lot of the sounds that you hear in movies are actually made up of a bunch of different sounds instead of just like one single sound effect. And this is what I mean when I say it's a layered sound effect. So, for example, in this scene where Indiana Jones runs away from the boulder, they didn't just find one boulder sound effect. There are multiple layers of the boulder sound. There's a low rumble, there's a light crunch of the sand underneath it, there's the driving sound of the boulder itself, the rock itself rolling after him. All of those things layered together creates the full feel and sound of the giant rolling boulder. And most importantly, sounds don't necessarily have to follow real life, unless that's the mood that you're going for. Sounds can be exaggerated and manipulated for shows. I mean, you can get away with creativity when you're talking about sound design, especially if you're working within the narrative genre. The last step here is going to be mixing your sound effects with music and score. Now, of course, music can make your audience feel whatever you want them to feel. However, too much music and too loud music can completely obliviate all the work that you just did, creating all this awesome sound design. This is where mixing comes into play. So lower your sound design, lower your music, play around with the levels of each of them so that you get your point across narratively, but without having one side necessarily overpower the other. Without sound effects and the music by itself, your show is gonna to become too one-dimensional. Thanks for watching, everybody.